Socialist history, the utopians. Socialism is a complex set of ideas which have been revolutionized over centuries. In order to fully understand some of the complex notions and principles which exist within contemporary socialist movements, we must study the history of the whole development of socialism. This video, being the first part, will cover the first instance of socialist theory, the utopian socialists. In their time, they were simply referred to as socialists. The term utopian was not tagged onto there until the theories were deemed obsolete by other socialists. Socialism was developed as a response to the development of capitalism and the Industrial Revolution. Therefore, if we want to understand socialism, we will have to start from the beginning. Capitalism began primarily through the increase of foreign trade. This foreign trade led to the creation of a new class, one middling the lines of the serf and the lord, the merchant. The expansion of trade, which occurred both internally and externally, caused the once static economies of feudal Europe to experience an unprecedented amount of money to be exchanged in a relatively short period of time. This led to, for the first time in European history since the Roman Empire, massive inflation. From the Solidarity Federation, quote, Increased use of money and inflation began to undermine the feudal order. The gentry wanted money to buy the new luxury goods that flooded Europe. Meanwhile, spiraling prices meant that they could make money either by producing and trading agricultural goods directly or by renting the land to a growing class of large-scale farmers. Thus, capitalism was quick to penetrate into English agriculture where part of the landowning class formed a block with the new capitalist farmer. These changes in the economy led to a dramatic change in social relations. The peasantry, who had been, for all intents and purposes, tied to the land and virtually owned by the lords, were set free. In other words, evicted. Evictions gathered pace as trade increased, especially as the growth of the textile industry raised the demand for high-quality English wool. The landed gentry enclosed more and more common land to raise sheep. Such land was owned collectively by the peasantry and was forcibly taken over, stolen, by the aristocracy. Some measures of the pace of evictions can be gauged from contemporary writers. Thomas More, at the start of the 16th century, recorded that the sheep swallow down the very men themselves. End quote. Also from the Solidarity Federation, Quote, Capitalism started to emerge during the 17th century. At first, the merchants, or buyer-uppers as they became known, were a link between the consumer and the producer. However, gradually, they began to dominate the latter, first by placing orders and paying in advance, then by supplying the raw materials and paying a wage for the work done in producing finished goods. The concept of a wage worker signaled a crucial stage in the development of capitalism. Its introduction was the final stage of the buyer-uppers transition from merchant to capitalist. The first stage of capitalism had come into being. This stage saw one new class, the primitive capitalists, exerting power over another new class, the waged workers. End quote. Over time, the competition between the new capitalist class for larger profits would produce more and more advanced methods of production in the interest of saving time and lowering costs. None did more so than the invention of the steam engine. However, these new machines were incredibly hard to produce, even more so expensive. Because of this, only a handful of capitalists, who had amassed a great deal of wealth, were able to purchase this revolutionary piece of machinery. As was noted by Frederick Engels in Principles of Communism, quote, These machines, which were very expensive and hence could be only bought by big capitalists, altered the whole mode of production and displaced the former workers, because the machines turned out cheaper and better commodities than the workers could produce with their inefficient spinning wheels and hand looms. The machines delivered industry wholly into the hands of the big capitalists, and rendered entirely worthless the meager property of the workers. The result was that the capitalists soon had everything in their hands, and nothing remained to the workers." End quote. This would completely revolutionize all industries, hence its name, the Industrial Revolution. 
Utopian socialism was born out of the wails and woes of the industrial proletariat in Great Britain and later France. Utopian socialists were bourgeois intellectuals and petty bourgeois philosophers, none of whom were actual representatives of the proletariat. There are four founders of utopian socialism, whom are to be mentioned. Robert Owen, Henry de Saint-Simon, Charles Fourier, and Etienne Cabot. Robert Owen was the owner of a textile mill in Wales. Robert Owen is credited with the first creation of the modern cooperative, where he set up the first cooperative business as a cotton mill in Scotland. A cooperative is a business in which all its employees have equal ownership over it, who are able to discuss and control the profits of the business as a group. Owen is best known for his efforts to improve the working conditions of his factory workers and his help in creation of experimental communes. In 1824, Owen traveled to the United States, where he invested the majority of his wealth into an experimental commune known as New Harmony in Indiana. These communes were the primary model for Owen's ideal society. The experiment was short-lived, lasting about two years, and his other experiments would suffer the same fate. According to Wikipedia, St. Simon was a French political and economic theorist and businessman whose thought played a substantial role in influencing politics, economics, sociology, and the philosophy of science. He created a political and economic ideology known as Saint-Simonianism that claimed that the needs of an industrial class, which he also referred to as the working class, needed to be recognized and fulfilled to have an effective society and an efficient economy. Unlike conceptions within industrializing societies of a working class being manual laborers alone, St. Simon's late 18th century conception of the class included all people engaged in productive work that contributed to society. That includes business people, managers, scientists, bankers, along with manual laborers, amongst others. He said the primary threat to the needs of the industrial class was another class he referred to as the idling class. That included able people who preferred to be parasitic and benefit from the work of others while seeking to avoid doing work themselves. St. Simon stressed the need for recognition of the merits of the individual and the need for hierarchy of merit in society and in the economy, such as society having hierarchical merit-based organizations of managers and scientists to be the decision makers in government. He strongly criticized any expansion of government intervention into the economy beyond ensuring no hindrance to productive work and reducing idleness in society, regarding intervention beyond these as too intrusive. St. Simon's conceptual recognition of broad socioeconomic contribution and his Enlightenment valorization of scientific knowledge soon inspired and influenced utopian socialism, liberal political theorist John Stuart Mill, anarchism through its founder Pierre-Joseph Proudhon, who was inspired by St. Simon's thought, and Marxism with Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels identifying St. Simon as an inspiration to their ideas and classifying him among the utopian socialists. According to Wikipedia, Ferrier was a French philosopher, influential early socialist thinker, and one of the founders of utopian socialism. Some of Fourier's social and moral views, held to be radical in his lifetime, have become mainstream thinking in modern society. For instance, Fourier is credited with having originated the word feminism in 1837. Fourier declared that concern and cooperation were the secrets of societal success. He believed that a society that cooperated would see an immense improvement in their productivity levels. Workers would be recompensated for their labors according to their contribution. Fourier saw such cooperation occurring in communities called phalanxes based upon structures called phalansteries, or grand hotels. These buildings were four-level apartment complexes, where the richest had the uppermost apartments, and the poorest had a ground-floor residence. Wealth was determined by one's job. Jobs were assigned based on the interests and desires of the individual. There were incentives. Jobs people might not enjoy doing would receive higher pay. Fourier considered trade to be the source of all evil. According to Wikipedia, Cabot was a French philosopher and utopian socialist who founded the Icarian movement. Cabot became the most popular socialist advocate of his day, with a special appeal to the artisans who were being undercut by factories, 
and his communitarian ideals later influenced Karl Marx and others. Cabot published Voyage en Icari in French in 1839 and in English in 1840 as Travels in Icaria, in which he proposed replacing capitalist production with workers' cooperatives. Recurrent problems with French officials led him to emigrate to the United States in 1848. Cabot founded utopian communities in Texas and in Illinois, but was again undercut, this time by recurring feuds with his followers. So, what went wrong? Utopian socialism suffered from great internal deficiencies. Their methods for social change relied on forcing the world around them to comply to their theory, rather than having their theory change to fit the world around them. This is exemplified by their experimental communes, which followed the pattern of occupying a plot of land and attempting to set up self-sustaining egalitarian communities, and using this as a theoretical modem for social change. Utopian socialism lacked a real understanding of class and class conflict, as was seen in St. Simon's conception of an industrial class, which lumped together businessmen and laborers, who have radically different social interests. They did not generally believe in class struggle or any form of physical revolution. What's important to be noted is, although I'm bashing it as a failure, utopian socialism was a necessary development in the proletarian ideology. It developed alongside the development of the capitalist production and paved the way for the creation of scientific socialism. As capitalist production advanced from country to country, so too did socialism, as a response developed in lockstep with the development of the working class and the demands which formed in their collective consciousness. The utopian socialists were able to analyze the problems of the working class and put forth theories as to their solutions. The largest problem that these theories would face would be that they couldn't ground themselves in material reality, but as higher capitalist development was moving to Germany, this would soon begin to change.